we have many transi transient uh, neonatal phenomena. For example, a newborn baby born by vaginal delivery has sticky eyes, watering eyes. It's normal because the head is coming upside down. There is congestion of the face and both the nasal congestion and the uh, eye congestion after birth or the subconjunctival hemorrhage. These are normal phenomena. Uh, cleaning and uh, massage should be enough. And also in the older babies, tear duct obstruction is fairly common. So you often see pediatrician just giving antibiotic drops and uh, all the more uh, they do uh, cultures as well. And invariably, the colonized organisms will come back on the culture. So there is no need to do culture for these babies. Ophthalmia neonatorum is clear cut. You will see uh, purulent discharge on a repeated basis. If it is a staphylococcal infection as well, uh, you'd see pus coming out frequently. But if you have just a stickiness when the baby opens their eyes after sleep and it's little watering, advise them to clean the eyes with wet cotton and it should go away. So reassuring is enough in these cases. The tear duct obstruction, of course, presents by two to three weeks when the baby starts producing tears. And again, uh, you realize that it is not infection because it's not pus pouring out. You have to teach the parents to be patient because this is something which takes time to clear. I mentioned briefly in the beginning about watery stools in the newborn period. So initially, the baby has meconium, the breastfeeding goes slow, the mother's milk is starting to come. By five to seven days, and in the multigravida, the milk may come sooner. It may happen by three to four days. So the milk starts coming. We know that the babies have a relatively low lactase enzyme. So it's a physiologic lactose intolerance, we call it. That's normal. And that is one of the reasons probably why nature wants the breast milk to increase gradually. So the long-term health of the baby is better if the breast milk increases more gradually. If you start giving formula, the baby doesn't digest it. If the baby has hypoglycemia and you give formula, for example, you get significant nappy rash because these babies don't digest the lactose very well. And this is a physiologic lactose intolerance. These babies have watery stools once the milk volume increases either from breastfeeding or because you gave unnecessary formula. It's uh, adequate to reassure the parents. You can tell them, guide them not to overfeed because uh, initially in the hospital, we tell them you need to keep feeding every two hours. But we don't tell them that the ones... Once the milk is coming, once the baby gains weight, you can actually slow down on that. You can allow the baby to sleep longer if they are sleeping in a demand pattern. Many mothers continue to wake up the baby every two hours and they get into engorgement. They get into uh, this watery stools and uh, nappy rash and so on. So you don't change the milk in these cases. You reassure them. You give them the feeding advice on how to space the feeds, how to avoid overfeeding and the appropriate feeding. You shouldn't give formula. Uh, never change. Uh, to formula in these babies because it disrupts your breastfeeding and getting back to exclusive breastfeeding is almost impossible. You, you don't need to do that. It recovers, but give them that advice on how to feed properly. Again, uh, prolonged or persistent jaundice. Obviously, it's important to rule out conjugated jaundice because uh, if the jaundice continues, you don't assume it's breast milk jaundice. You need to do a direct bilirubin. You may need to do the thyroid function again if the newborn screen was normal even. But uh, there is no role to stop or reduce breastfeedings in the majority. Very rarely you get it approaching the uh, phototherapy level on a repeated basis, in which case you can give one or two days on formula. Uh, but educating the mother to express, but very, very rare. If you see 100 babies with prolonged jaundice or uh, persistent jaundice, it's only one or two who may need a brief trial on formula. But uh, have a very high threshold for that. Educate the parents well. Again, uh, don't take phenobarbitone lightly. Even for seizures, phenobarbitone is not the first line anymore because it uh, causes apoptosis in certain parts of the brain, including the cerebellum. So there is no role for phenobarbitone therapy unless you diagnose a krigler najar type 2, which is a very rare genetic problem. So for most cases of prolonged jaundice, it's common to see a bilirubin of 13 or 14 at one month and sometimes even up to two months. As long as the direct bilirubin is normal, the thyroid function is normal, baby is thriving, you may consider ruling out urinary tract infection, but don't uh, stop breastfeeding because once you stop the breastfeeding, the mother's emotions play a role as well. They may become anxious and they may not want to go back to uh, breastfeeding or the disruption affects the baby, the confusion, the pattern change, and they may not be able to go back to breastfeed. So never take this lightly.